Hey everyone, Tech Dad here, and in today's video, we are going to discuss how to use external hard drives with your iPad. And this is going to be a full extensive guide. So we're going to start with the basics of how to access your hard drive and how to move files around. And then we'll talk about some more advanced pieces such as using port hubs, using multiple drives at a time, using Thunderbolt cables, and even reformatting a hard drive with your iPad. In addition, we'll talk about which iPads you should be using for the best features because this doesn't work with every single iPad in the same way. And I'm going to be demonstrating with my M5 iPad Pro. You don't need this new of a model to do this stuff, but again, I'll talk to you about which iPads can do which things. All right, let's get into it. Okay, first, let's just start with the basics on how to access your hard drive. So you can use any hard drive that you have. So you can use a hard drive that requires power like this one here because your iPad will power it. Or you can use just a simple thumb drive if you have that available as well. These are awesome for portability and still have a ton of storage space on them. And they're pretty affordable. The thumb drive is convenient because it requires no cables. You just plug it right in. Although sometimes the speeds can be a lot slower for big file transfers. The larger external hard drives that require power can usually send data a lot faster. So if you have an old hard drive that uses the old style USB port, you can use one of the Apple adapters or a generic adapter to connect it to your iPad. So let's start with an example of using that thumb drive. So if I plug my thumb drive into my iPad, I can access the files on it by pulling up the files app. So pull up the files app and make sure you have the sidebar open. And if you have that sidebar, you will see your hard drive appear. And now that you see it, you can click on that hard drive, see what files are in there. And then you can open a second window to start dragging and dropping files, just like on a Mac. And so I like to use the new menu bar to open a new window. And so I'll go up to the menu bar, select window, and then select new window. And you can use those stoplight buttons to position your windows. I like to put the windows side by side when I'm dragging and dropping. You can just press and hold on those stoplight buttons to set up your windows the way you want. So let's say I've got some big files in my iCloud drive and I wanna get those files out of there to clear up my iCloud drive space. Well, I can just pull up my iCloud drive in one window, select the files that I want. And if you wanna select multiple files, you need to click the three dots and then select. It isn't like a Mac where you can just drag your cursor and select a bunch of files. You have to hit that select button first. Once I have the files that I want, I can just drag them and drop them over. And I like iPadOS 26 because now it gives you a status of how long those files are going to take to move. It's kind of accurate. I kind of sort of trust the time that it gives, but at least it's nice to know and have a status bar. But one of the best ways to clear up space on your iPad is to move photos and videos out of the Photos app. So if you are only storing your photos and videos locally on your iPad in the Photos app, you can absolutely move them off of there. So you can open the Photos app, you can select the photos and videos that you want to move, then click the Share button, and then you can select Save to Files and select your hard drive. And just start dumping all your stuff in there, which is really nice. Nice. So if you're trying to free up hard drive space on your iPad, try moving your photos and videos off of it onto an external hard drive, and then you'll have to delete those photos out of the Photos app. But they're backed up and saved somewhere else, so you're good to go. Something else that's really cool is you can also right-click that hard drive and see how much space is available on that hard drive, and you can see how much space is being used. So to do that, just right-click on the hard drive and then select Get Info, and you'll see all the information on that drive. It's really cool. Now, please note, it also matters what case cables you're using. So if you want the fastest speeds, you really need to use cables that support USB-C 4 or Thunderbolt. And so only the iPad Pro has support for Thunderbolt connectivity. And if you actually use those cables, you're going to get faster speeds. So just make sure you're using the best cables possible if you want the fastest speeds. Now you can transfer files on a base iPad, but it's going to be a lot slower. So I've got the A16 iPad. It's definitely much slower. I think it's about 480 megabits per second, as opposed to Thunderbolt, which is like 40 gigabits per second, so a big difference. Okay, next, let's talk about using port hubs and plugging in multiple hard drives at a time. So something I wanna note is this is really only doable on the iPad Pro series, particularly iPad Pros that support Thunderbolt and USB-C 4. And you can check out Apple's website to see which iPads are compatible, but this is something you're not gonna be able to do with the base iPad. Now at home, I use my Apple Studio display as my port hub. So not only is this display a monitor, but it also serves as a port hub and you have several ports in the back. And so I love this about my studio display. I can just plug all my drives into the studio display and then I can connect my display to my iPad and then I can pull up the files app and I'll see the hard drives pop up there. And so now I can work with multiple drives and I can even move files from one drive to another. So if I set up my thumb drive on one side of the screen and my external drive on the other side, I can start to drag and drop files. It's really awesome. And you don't need an Apple studio display to do this. 
this, you can use any port hub. So I have a Dell port hub at work at my project management job, and I absolutely use that to connect all kinds of things to my iPad at once, including multiple hard drives, a monitor, ethernet, and everything else you could think of. Okay, next, let's talk about reformatting a hard drive. So sometimes hard drives are not in the right format. Maybe they're formatted for Windows, and you want to reformat it so that your iPad can actually read the drive. Well, it's very easy to do that. You can simply right-click the drive and select Erase. And when you do that, you get some options. So you can choose the Apple formatting system, or you can choose XFAT, which should be able to be read by a Windows machine. And I've done some research where XFAT is supposed to be readable by Mac and PC, but whenever I format a hard drive to XFAT, I often can't see it with my iPad. So I just stick to the Apple formatting system, and my iPad can always pick it up. Something else you should note is you cannot have multiple partitions on your drive, and you can't reformat a hard drive with the iPad to have multiple partitions. Well, what's a partition, Tech Dad? What's that mean? Well, a partition is where you can chunk up a hard drive into multiple pieces, and some Mac users like to do this. They'll have one partition just for Time Machine, and then they'll have another partition where they can just store regular files. So that's really handy to be able to partition drives like that and cut them up into pieces for various purposes. Well, you can't do that on iPad. You just have to have one partition only, and when you reformat a hard drive, you can only make one partition. If you're a beginner, you're not going to care about that, but if you're an advanced user, that might be a big deal. Okay, so why use external hard drives with your iPad? Well, external hard drives are good for moving files off of the iPad, like Word docs or big video files, but there are some things that don't work like a computer. Like, you can't install an app to an external hard drive with the iPad. So if I wanted to install Call of Duty Mobile, I have to install that on my iPad. I can't move that to an external hard drive and boot that application up from a hard drive. Doesn't work like a computer. So while using external hard drives can save you some space on your iPad, especially if you have big video files like me, this can be very useful. But you can't store applications on there and boot from there. That's not going to work. All right, so that's my guide on using hard drives for your iPad. Let me know if you have questions about this. You can leave a comment below. I'm happy to help you out. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.